Today, we're taking a look at the all new Chevy Cruze hatchback. Now, this isn't just any hatchback. This one is a journalist's dream because it's equipped with a 1.6 liter diesel engine and a six speed manual transmission. Does it get any better than that? The hatchback diesel does come with a few extra goodies. You get the RS package, which ups the sporty quotient. It also has the comfort pack, which gives you heated seats, keyless entry, and some other nice amenities. Under the hood is a 1.6 liter turbo diesel engine that puts out 137 horsepower. Aha, but the big number is torque. You're looking at 250 pound feet of torque all the while getting more than 50 miles to the gallon on the freeway and 30 around town. One of the biggest benefits of getting a hatchback is flexibility. And here, the Chevy Cruze really delivers. In the back, you're looking at 47.2 cubic feet of storage with the second row down, which is average for the class, but still much better than the sedan. Put those second row seats up and a full-size adult fits just fine. The Cruze is Chevrolet's mainstream compact car. It is a little hard for me to get my head around the fact that this is a sport hatch with a diesel engine. I mean, how European sounding is that? Now this diesel is one of the most economical non-hybrid vehicles you can buy in America. EPA rates it at 52 miles to the gallon on the freeway and 30 around town. If you're considering this and comparing it to say maybe the Hyundai Ioniq in terms of which is best for you in terms of economy, well, if you're driving in a lot of stop and go traffic around town, a hybrid can produce much higher MPG. However, if you're doing more long haul travel, such as state to state or city to city, a diesel will definitely yield the better result. Now, I have a little bit of a history with diesels. My grandfather being a former diesel mechanic always kept old smelly diesel engines around. I mean, in his backyard, he had old international trucks, uh, school buses, diesel powered Land Rovers, you name it. And his daily driver was a 504 Peugeot diesel. How quirky is that? Of course, modern diesels have put that smelly past behind them. Long gone is the time where you have to sit and wait for glow plugs to warm up. Nope, you just put in the clutch, hit the start button, and you're ready to go. The only major difference being that you have to fill up with diesel, of course. You also need to maintain an emissions fluid, which is a combination of water and urea. It's fine, trust me, it's not that hard to deal with. You just need to make sure that you follow the manufacturer's recommendations. Now, the interesting thing about this car is that it starts at around $26,000, but you do get quite a lot of extras for that money. You get the comfort package, which includes fun things like heated seats, and it also has the RS package as standard. That means it gets some sporty extras, such as better wheels, a rear wing, and it also has something called a Z-brace in the back, which should help with handling. You know, some people who buy daily drivers actually still want to have fun when they drive. This could be that option. In the middle, we have a monochrome display that isn't fancy, but it's certainly functional. Uh, I do like the fact that this has all of the little rubberized buttons inset right here. Um, I can control the center cluster with these ones. And over here, we have cruise control. Nothing fancy like adaptive, it's just a standard cruise control, but at this price point, that's really quite fine. If you are looking for adaptive, really the only option is the Toyota Corolla, which comes standard with that feature. Because this is the RS with the comfort package, I do get a heated steering wheel though, so that's nice. Over here we have a good size display, and I like how it's integrated into the dash. It's not one of those trendy floating displays. Uh, this one is a large touchscreen, and it has their typical interface, which gives me temperature, date, I can have a gallery of photos, I have my OnStar interface, I can pick radio stations, standard audio controls, go to menu, tone setting, I can adjust the bass and the treble. I can also plug in my iPhone, and voila, CarPlay. 
and from here we can access maps. Now if you notice, the base software here does not include maps. You have to use uh, either Android or CarPlay to get that functionality. Now it also supports Android Auto. I just don't happen to have one of those phones, so I can't show it to you. You have uh, Teen Driver. Now this allows you to be able to hand the keys to your teen driver. You can see a report of how fast your child drove. Uh, you can also set limits as well as uh, register specific keys so that a certain key can be the one that you hand your teenager. Aircon, nice metal surrounds on the dials and the buttons are traditional plastics which are what you would expect at this price point. One thing I was kind of surprised with is this manual transmission. I like the grip, it's kind of cool. Usually on these economy cars, uh, the grip is kind of flimsy feeling. This one actually feels pretty nice. But there is a big question about this manual transmission. Yes, it has a manual transmission, but is this fun or for economy? Now hear me out, there is a difference. With economy five speeds, those are basically people who don't want to spend the extra money for an automatic. You get a rubbery kind of spongy manual transmission feel. It doesn't have that snicket, snicket, snicket kind of feel that you get with a sports oriented manual transmission. Sporty or economy? We'll answer that one later. As for the rest of it, it's all pretty straightforward. The seat is relatively comfortable. The steering wheel is in a good position. I can also adjust telescope and angle. Let's see, like that. And my rear view mirrors are powered and I have power door locks. Yeah. So is this Chevy Diesel Cruze an economical purchase or a fun purchase? Let's find out. It's so quiet, it just hums along. Actually, even from a non-diesel perspective, the Chevy Cruze is a very quiet car. I mean, it's super windy outside, I'm on a really bumpy road, and it's very quiet in here. Peak torque on this car by my budometer is telling me between 3,000 and 4,000. That is a very small performance window. And I hate to say it, but with only six speeds, I'm not sure if it's gonna be able to keep us in that sweet spot. This thing is surprisingly quick. I mean, honestly, I came out here expecting to say, yeah, but jeez. The, the trick is, though, finding that power band. Ah, oh, it's so just right there. I have like 1,000 RPM to play with. Power out of the corners. It's a nice thing about front wheel drive. I actually prefer all wheel drive or rear wheel drive, but front wheel drive does have its place and it can be fun. Just because it's front wheel drive does not mean this car cannot be fun. There are hundreds of examples of great front wheel drive sporty cars. The handling here, I mean, I'm getting just a hint of push in the corners. I can rotate that back out as I'm going through. Um, that guy had a bad day. Did that just happen? Is there somebody in there? Nope. Okay, well, don't be like that guy. Oh, the killer is this engine. It has lots of torque, but keeping it within that window of 3,000 and 4,000 RPM, it's a bit of a struggle, to be honest. I kind of almost think that an automatic nine speed would be better mated to this car. I haven't driven that version, but it is available, and it does give you more gears to keep the car in the sweet spot. Because as it is right now, I got to admit, I'm struggling. That said, the point of this car is economy. 
It just happens to also be a good chassis that's relatively fun to drive. Now, keep in mind, relatively, this is the kind of car where you own an S2000 for the weekends, but during weekdays when commuting, you also don't want to drive something that absolutely sucks. Well, this car, yeah, I'm happy to say it does not suck. Maybe the Z-Brace is doing some stuff back there because I've never had a car with one of those, but I do not remember the Chevy Cruze being this much fun to drive. Push it in the corners and you're really not getting much understeer. It's, it's right in there. <sighs> little switchbacks, little weight transfer. Ugh. Trying to keep the power in that range. Now we're out of power. Now we have not, we're not yet on power. It's a constant balance. So gear ratios, power band, that's the problem with this car. Although if you're gonna be commuting around town and just occasionally hitting a twisty, well, in which case, this is fine. <laughs> it's fine, because I am having a heck of a good time with this. Oh, don't be that guy. Ah, come on, you can do it. Get into that power band. miss that heel toe. Yeah, the pedal position isn't ideal. Wouldn't make a race car out of this, or if I did, I'd adjust the pedal box. Let's talk about this stick shift. Now, earlier I was saying that sometimes a stick shift is a choice for economy, uh, being that it's less expensive than an automatic, or it can be chosen for performance because they're more fun to drive. Well, I hate to say it, but in this case, I think the automatic might be more fun to drive. And I got two reasons for that. First, the throws on this shifter are really spongy. It's kind of hard to tell exactly when you've hit your gate. Yes, there's a slight snicket at the end, but it's really like, it's like shifting through jello. Ugh, ugh. And then there's the diesel engine, which itself is great. I have no arguments about this diesel engine. However, when you've made it to a six-speed manual transmission and you are trying to pop through the gears, revving and downshifting and trying to really get optimal power through the corners, uh, roughly 1,000 to 1,500 RPM is not a lot of room to play with. And six speeds, sometimes, honestly, just doesn't feel like enough. I'm kind of wondering if they can monkey with the gear ratios a little bit to give me a little bit more, you know, options within second and third. Mediocrity, this is thy transmission. This has been my first look at the 2018 Chevy Cruze RS diesel hatchback. What an interesting, interesting car. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthat. Be sure to subscribe for all our videos right here.